All my words fall short. I've got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often do, but every song must stand, and you never do. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again, 'cause all that I have is a heart. Nothing else fit for a king, except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got just one spoke. I got just one move. With my arms stretched wide, I will worship you.、Oh, so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah, and I. Nothing else fit for King, except for hearts singing Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Y'all don't be shy right here. Just let your heart sing it out. Give him praise today, like Pastor John said. Come on, my soul. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me and lift up your soul. 'Cause you've got a lion inside of those arms. Get up and praise the Lord. He. Oh, come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me and lift up your soul. 'Cause you've got a lion. So I throw my hands and praise you again and again, 'cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah, and I know it's not much. I'm nothing else fit for a king, except for a heart singing. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord, y'all.
Well, good morning, Hills family. Happy Sunday. Happy December. Happy Christmas at the Hills. <laughs> uh, and as Pastor John mentioned, we had a little visit from some Christmas elves to make this place look festive and ready for Christmas time. And I think it's also a beautiful physical representation of how we prepare our hearts for the King Jesus who's coming. Thank God that he's coming, right? Well, my name is Mackenzie Miller, and I'm part of the host team here at the Hills. And I want to give a very special welcome to all of our first-time guests today. Um, as Pastor John likes to say, yeah, there we go. As Pastor John likes to say, uh, you probably passed a whole bunch of churches to make it here this morning. So we're grateful that you're here with us. If you are a first-time guest, we would love it if you could fill out one of these Connect cards. And these will help us to do just that and connect with you. We'd love to know how we can be praying for you, or maybe you're celebrating something in this season. We can be praising with you. Um, after service, you can bring this out to the info bar, and Kelly and I will be there. We would love to meet you in person and say hello. Um, just know how we can be supporting you and do this life together. Um, and then uh, just a couple of quick little agenda things. Um, we are going to be having a Christmas Eve service. It's gonna be a family service um, since Christmas Eve is a Sunday. It's just gonna be right at 10.30. So bring everybody, fill the car up, bring your neighbors, bring your cousins, yeah. and come, come celebrate Christmas with us on the 24th. And then uh, a week later, Y'all get a break. So um, get ready for New Year's, and uh, we will be having no, no service on the 31st. Um, Hills family, please give a big welcome to all of our first-time guests for joining us today. Turn around and tell a couple of people that they look good, they smell like Christmas. Tell them, they smell like Christmas. Yeah. You may be seated. Let's continue some worship today. What made you sin such a wonderful gift from heaven to earth? I'll never understand why you gave, so that you gave your only son, king in a manger born to us. Now all I can do is fall down and worship, fall down, give glory, fall down, sing hallelujah. What did you see in someone like me that you chose to die? You gave the greatest price, wrapped in love, gave your life for us and for the whole world. King on a cross, you died for us. Now all I can And worship fall down and give glory fall down sing hallelujah sing it all I can do is fall down and worship fall down and give glory
And all I can do is fall down. Come on, sing it out. And worship, fall down. And give glory, fall down. Sing hallelujah. And all I can do. saw you laying on the floor down there. <laughs> Can I use <laughs> this? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, God is so good and he loves every single one of you so much. He loves you so much. And this morning before church, I was just thanking him for his salvation. I think sometimes I take that for granted and I think we do. Just the gift that salvation is. And if there's someone in this place that you don't feel close to the Lord or maybe you don't feel like you're saved, that he's here for that today. We're here for that today. That is our number one. The gospel is our number one goal. And so I want everyone in this room to know that you can experience that in this place today. And then he loves you. And, and the word says that he's the father of lights and all of the good things that come down, all the gifts that he gives us are good gifts. Our, our father wants to give us good gifts, right? And they're all good and perfect gifts that he knows, only he knows what we really need in our lives. But I, today I wanna kinda just shift that focus in this, and John, that song is just one of my favorites ever. Um, that maybe we could shift that and we could think about what's a gift that we could give God this Christmas? What could we give Jesus? I mean, he has everything, right? But does he have you? That's what he wants. That's what he wants. And maybe he has you, maybe he has me. But in my quiet time this week, I realized there's some things that I was keeping for myself, right? They, like I was just keeping them to myself and he doesn't need that or I'm gonna keep that, it's better if I keep it. And maybe there's something in your life and this is not any kind of like guilt or shame or bad, bad, no. Like maybe there's something in your life that you have that you've been keeping from him and I don't know what the reason is. I know my reasons, but like maybe you could just give that to him this season for Christmas. Maybe you could take that thing that you've been holding close to your heart and you could just present it on the altar of God that you could present it to him and say, you know, I don't really need this. And watch and see what he replaces that with and what things, what good things that he brings into your life. So I wanna challenge you there. Think about what that is. And I think we all, when I say that, we kind of, something comes to mind, right? And that's okay. Let's give him that this morning um, in our worship and in the word and in our prayer. I don't wanna miss this moment and I, I don't want you guys to leave here the same as you came in. It's, that's, he, he desires uh, to, to give us those things so that we can live in fullness and in hope and we can have hope for the things that we think are lost in our lives. So I want that for you. Are you gonna sing some more? Okay. You took, you took the mic, so you tell me. Well, I'm not gonna sing. I love you guys. Be thinking about that. Present that to him for Christmas. It's amazing. Did you read my sermon notes today? <laughs> you just pretty much preached the message, so thank you. And all I can do is Come on Man, 
Y'all learned it quick. Sing hallelujah. Somebody watching online right there in your living room. All I can do is fall in the hotel room and worship. Oh, maybe on a tour bus. And give a glory for in your office. Sing hallelujah. Come on, sing it again. And all I can do Thank the Lord for his presence today. Amen. Amen. Band, thank y'all so much for what you do. Yeah, the, the, the Christmas season is never easy on a worship band because you've got to do Christmas songs and you're thinking all this stuff. And last night, I literally, as I was doing the final prep on my message, I literally sent Tyler a text and said, I want to do a song tomorrow. Band didn't know it. They showed up learned it, played it, and then what's crazy is this one right here, singing harmony for me today, was singing harmony for Patty Loveless at the Grand Ole Opry last night. So, Danny, we're glad that, I mean, Patty, okay, whatever. We're glad you, would you give the band one more great big hand? That means y'all can be dismissed. Thank y'all. Well, glad you're in church today. Thank you for being here again. My name is John, and my wife and I were the pastors here at the Hills. Thank you, Danny. I appreciate that. We're the pastors here at the Hills, and we're just delighted that, that you're with us today. Uh, we've been in a series, uh, no, we have, we have been in a series called Elements, and so we're coming out of that today, and uh, I'm excited about, about diving in to the Christmas season. We got some really cool stuff planned for you this week, uh, this, this week, month, I'm sorry, some exciting stuff, some special songs, and some guests that are going to be showing up. Speaking of guests, uh, Andrew, our bass player, uh, is originally from New Jersey, and his mom is here. Mom, we're glad you're with us today from New Jersey. I can't do a New Jersey accent, but we're glad you're with us today. Come on, you ready for the word today? I mean, Kristen already preached most of it, so when, when I get to a, if I get to a good point, just shout out amen, Kristen, all right? I want you, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to uh, Mark chapter 2. If not, they're going to be, the scriptures will be on the screens today. I want to do a little study on the wise men. How many, how many read like self-help books, books to help you kind of be, be better at business, at sales, at me, whatever you do, raise your hand. Uh, my youngest, Davis, is a, an artist, a musician, a creative, and he's reading the new Rick Rubin book right now about just how to be a, a creative person. And so we're all tr always trying to get better. What I find though is I want to find people that have been through some stuff, that know some stuff, that have figured out some stuff. And so I think it's important if you find a wise person, let's learn from them. And so we're going to spend the next two Sundays uh, that I know of, we may go longer than that, but we'll start this Sunday and next Sunday. And I want to do a study on the wise men. And the Bible tells us in Matthew 2, it says this, now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Wise men, everybody say wise men. Now, when you look at the wise men, you also see the word magi, uh, or when you study that word, you begin to 
find out that these men were either royalty, or they were kings, some people believe. We know that they were pagans, that they were, they were heathens, they were unbelievers, they were astrologers, and some people believe they were even sorcerers. So they studied the heavens and they studied the stars, but they also would study scripture as well. And so they saw this star suddenly appearing, and it's really cool if you want to, when you, when you get home today, a little homework, just study the star, because it says that it appears, it says that it rose, it says that it led them, it says that it stopped. So it, this is not a normal star. It kind of reminds me of the, the fire by night and the cloud by day that led the people of Israel. Let me just tell you, if you're looking for him, he will lead you. Come on, I need a bigger amen right now. If you're looking for him, the Bible says, if you seek me, you will find me. He's going to figure out a way to get you where you need to go if you're looking for him. Well, if I had you back on that organ, we'd go right now for just a minute. It goes on in, in verse number 10. It says, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The first lesson that we can learn from the wise men is they fell down. The wise men fell down. If you're taking notes, just write this down. The wise men fell down. This is a common response in the Bible. When you read through the Bible, you'll see that this happened when, whenever people would see Jesus, and especially after his resurrection. The Bible says over and over that when they see him, they would fall at his feet as if they were dead. They would fall. In our culture, in our society, we're taught that it's wrong to fall. Right? I mean, if you fall, you made a mistake. You tripped, you stumbled, you fell. It's a sign of failure. Falling is a sign of failure. Falling is a sign of, of being vulnerable, of, of, of being open. Falling is a sign of, of surrender. And we're taught, don't you ever surrender. You keep fighting. Don't you ever let anybody get the best of you. You, you keep standing for what you believe and you fight for it, especially on social media. You fight for it. Tell people what you think, right? It's about, and even in our families, in our relationships, I'm gonna stand my ground because they're wrong, right? Stand strong, be firm. And yet, throughout the scripture, you find that God is looking for people that have fallen. He's looking for failures. There's a, there's a, a song that one of my favorite writers and, and artists wrote called Jesus is for Losers. Jesus is for Losers. I find that the entire gospel is all about us falling. The entire gospel is about us failing. The entire gospel is about us needing rescue. That's the gospel. Not coming to him standing up, getting to a place that I can't do this anymore. I need some help. Very rarely does anybody come to Christ at the apex of their life, right? Very rarely does anybody come to Christ when their, their, when their career is right here. Most of the time, it's when you've fallen, when you failed, when you're old, when you're tired, when you're exhausted, when you're young, but you've, you've tried it all and there's still this void inside of you. That's when you go, I need help. Look at your neighbor and say, Jesus is for losers. Look at me. What, what did Jesus say to them? He said, you want to save your life? Look at me. You want to save your life? Then you need to lose it. We always say, give your life to Christ. He doesn't say that. 
He says, lose your life for me. Because you see, if I give, matter of fact, we'll do, I'll go with Danny. Danny, I like your shoes. All right, let's just say that I say to Danny, I like your shoes, and everybody wants to see your shoes now. After church, you can see them. Let's just say that Danny goes, okay, Pastor John, he takes them off and he gives them to me, right? Well, then Danny gets to get in the car and tell his wife and his, his daughters, hey, I gave Pastor John my shoes. So Danny gets credit. And every time I wear those shoes and someone goes, love your sneakers, Danny Magnino gave me these. Every time Danny gets credit because he did what? Okay, but what if Danny somehow today loses those shoes? My son Davis loses his shoes all the time. All the time. And on, thankfully with his iPhone, we have Find My iPhone. My wife will go, can you play his shoes? Could you play his shoes? Hit the tone on his shoes so we can find them. There is no tone on the shoes the other day, we have, we have three levels in our house. The other day, I found one of his shoes on the first level. Hold up. And the other shoe was on the third level. How many ever take your shoes off on different levels? No, most of them you take them off and you put them. I had a hand raised back there. Most of them you take them off and you put them together. So let's say Danny loses his shoes. Danny gets no credit for that. Matter of fact, Danny looks in the mirror and goes, you're a dummy. And everybody looks at Danny and goes, how could you lose those shoes? Jesus said, I want you to lose your life for me. You're gonna get no credit for it. You and I say, here I am, Lord. I'm yours. You can have all of me. Right? No, that's not how God wants us. He wants us crumbled, broken. Some of you right now feel like that you're so broken that it's too late for you. It's too late for you. I'm so broken. I've made so many mistakes. I've tried. Pastor John, you and Kristen, y'all don't understand. I mean, y'all got it figured out. I mean, it's easy for y'all to stand up and preach and talk about it. Y'all figure it out. Y'all got it figured out. Me, I'm broke. First of all, don't you pedestal me, okay? Don't put me on a pedestal or her on a pedestal. We're as broken as you are. And we're trying just as hard as you are. But I found in my brokenness that he doesn't run from that. That doesn't scare him at all. Matter of fact, the Bible says that he is near those who have a crushed heart. He is near those that are have a contrite spirit. That word contrite means crushed so much that it's dust. And so while you and I are trying to get our life all figured out, get dressed up and made up and pumped up and everything fixed, trying to get it all looking right, he's over in the corner looking for dust because that's what he's attracted to. Why? Because that's how he met Adam. First time he ever met Adam, Adam was dust. Didn't have to work with him, didn't have to break things, didn't have to, no, dust is moldable and and he could form Adam the way he wants. See, it could be that you are so broken and so trashed and so dusty (laughs) that maybe you could be right now right where he wants you to be. And the wise men came. And they fell. And they were kings. Think about that. They were kings. Royalty. And yet they fell down. Kings bowing before a baby. What was, what was the significance of that? Whenever, when in those days, whenever a king and a, 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 his army would vanquish another army, the, the king that lost that was defeated, would come before the victorious king, and what would he do? He would fall down. He would bow before him. This is what they were doing. These wise men, with all their royalty and all their money and all their treasures and their jewels, 
showed up to a child and fell down before him. They weren't knocked down. They didn't trip. They weren't pushed. They voluntarily fell down. Lean in, listen to me. Every single one of us are gonna fall at some point. At some point, you and I are going to fall before him. The Bible tells us in Revelations that the angels and the elders fall down before him. The scripture says there will be a day that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. I don't care who you are. You may be an atheist, an agnostic, or you may not even know what you are. You could be prideful and strong no matter who you are, how powerful you are, how brilliant you are. The Bible tells us there will be a day that you and I will bow our knee before him and we will confess that he is Lord. So why don't we do it now? Let's just start right now. Anyone who falls on the stone will be broken to pieces, but anyone on whom it falls will be crushed. How about we just start right now by falling before him, finding a place of submission. When the wise men, when these kings fell, everything they had fell with them. By falling and surrendering themselves, listen to me, they were also surrendering their wealth, their riches, their notoriety, even their kingdoms. Trusting that this child would not take advantage of them. Now this was not Jesus in the manger. This is probably several years afterwards. Some, some believe he was two, three, maybe four years old at this time. So they weren't, where, where, you, we, where you see in nativity, you'll see the shepherds and the wise men and the donkey and the lamb and the giraffe or whatever it is. They all are together. That's not what the Bible is, that's not what the Bible depicts. The Bible tells us that it was several years later that they came and they found. So they, they walk into a three-year-old, a four-year-old, and they fall before him. How many of you have a three-year-old, four-year-old? Can you imagine that? I just want to submit my life to you now. I'm giving you the keys to the car. Here's the, here's the password to the bank account. It's all yours. They did this. These wise men fell down in front of a child and submitted to him. He had not done anything for them. Had no promise that he would do anything for him. That's not why you fall down. What is in your life right now that just needs to be dropped? You need to lay it down. It needs to, you need to fall. Is it something that maybe you feel is, is too good for you to lay down? Is that, that thing in your life that's going well now? Come on, can I get to meddling instead of ministering just a moment? That area of your life, but man, this is really good right now. Are you, are you willing to lay that down? Or maybe it's too important for you, or maybe it's, it's too much, or maybe for some of you, it's too scary. I know for me, there were times in my life, especially as a pastor, that I was embarrassed to show him what I was battling with and struggling with. As if he didn't know. <laughs> you ever see those, you ever see the movie with a, like, like a Godzilla, you know? And Godzilla's stomping through. And you always have the one guy sneaking around a car <laughs> with a pistol. It's like, that's it, man. Sneak up on him. He can't see you. It's like us. We're trying to hide things. And he sees everything. He knows everything. And all he's waiting for us to do is just come fall down before him. Lay everything at his feet. How many have ever laid something down before him and gone back and picked it up? 
One, two, maybe make sure we have hum, humans in the room right now. <laughs> Bunch of AI cyborgs, come on. <laughs> yes, we do it. Oh, God, it's yours. And you get away. Ooh, I think I'm gonna come back. <laughs> Sneak back in. What if instead of laying it down, what if we just fell down? What if we just laid, the Bible talks about just laying down before him in a defenseless position. Prostrate before him. Just like the wise men came and they fell down. Some of you, somebody online, lean in, listen to me. Some of you need to fall down for other reasons. Some of you are to a place you just can't do this anymore. I mean, you are, like, you're right here. <laughs> you're on the edge. You're, I, don't, I don't know. You ever heard that? You're at the end of your rope. Tie a knot and hang on. Baby, I've tied five knots, and I'm doing everything I can. I'm hanging on with all that I have. And this journey has been so long, and I am so tired. Come on, I'm talking to someone right now. I felt this really strong during my message prep time this week. Chris and I prayed about this. We felt... For someone today, listen to me. Let me, let me, just don't even hear my voice. Could you hear the Lord speaking to you right now? Right where you are? I have baggage. I'm tired. Some of you feel like you will never recover from this. I'll never get over this. For some of you, it's a cycle in your life where you, where you I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, and then you're, man, you're right back where you were again. What if today you would just fall down? What if today you just wouldn't even try to carry it? And I can tell you, no matter what you're walking through, somebody in this room knows how you feel. Matter of fact, I probably know how you feel. Thinking about walking away from it all? Been there. Thinking life would just maybe be better if you weren't there? Everything would just be a little better if I just wasn't here, just disappeared. Been there. Battle with sleepless nights, been there. Struggle with depression, anxiety, been there. Found ways to cope, been there. What you wanna talk about? Had people walk out on you, been there. Had people lie on you, been there. Made bad choices, been there. What you wanna talk about? Let's go, baby. And you know who else knows exactly how you feel? The one that you're gonna fall down in front of. The Bible says there is nothing that you and I will ever go through that he hasn't experienced. Say it again. Come on, girl. Come on, somebody watching online, just say amen for me, amen? Hear me, listen, I'm gonna, let's get real now. Nothing. Friends left him. The Bible says he was tempted in all points, just like us, yet without sin. And then that little part, yet without sin, is where we go, well, he really doesn't know, does he? Because I sin. But you know that he also does know what it's like not to be able to carry something? The Bible tells us very clearly that as he carried his cross to Calvary, that there came a moment that he stumbled under the weight of it. He fell. Think about this. You got one job. You got one job. Miracles, great. One job. The one job that he has is to carry his cross to Calvary and shed his blood for our sins. And he almost gets there. And the Bible says, and Jesus stumbled and fell. And he could not carry his own cross. And the scripture says they grabbed a man out of the crowd and says, help him. And this man picks up his cross and carries it the rest of the way to Calvary. Why would he do that? You know why? 
because he wanted you to know. Even God knows what it's like to have a burden that's too heavy to carry. You are not alone. He knows how you feel. And all he's wanting you to do is fall down and worship. Fall down. Give glory. Fall down. Sing hallelujah. And all I can do is fall down and worship, fall down, give glory, fall down, sing hallelujah. Let's stand. How close was I? <laughs> I love Zach. <laughs> he's so honoring, but he's so honest at the same time. <laughs> he just gave me that little. And all I can do is fall down. Come on, y'all. And worship. Give glory. Give glory. Sing hallelujah, and all I can do is fall down, and worship, fall down, give glory, fall down, sing hallelujah. band come join me we don't do this a lot but I'd like to do this and there is no pressure there's no nothing on it but if there are those of you in the room right now that this is just this is like it's like God it's like God took this whole week and just said "All right, John you're going to preach you're going to preach to them if you feel like this is right where you are, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to step out from where you are and come up here. Just come to a good old fashioned altar call. Just come with me. No pressure. Nobody's judging you. Just come here. Fall down and worship. Fall down. Give glory. Sing hallelujah, and all I can do is fall down and worship, fall down, give glory, fall down, sing hallelujah. Come on, sing it out, and all I can do is fall down and worship fall down give glory fall down sing hallelujah and all I can do is fall down Come on, just lay it down. Those of you that are at the front, those of you here, why don't you just today, just, just lay it down before him. Just say, Lord, I'm laying it all down. The good, the bad, the ugly, it's yours today. Lay it all down before you.
you, Jesus. those of you that are here the front, would you just stand? Thank you for your honesty and openness. Thank you for that. And I want to thank you for letting me be honest and open and authentic. What if we all just prayed a prayer today? Just a loser's prayer. How's that sound? Just a loser's prayer. If you've never asked Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life, it's a great opportunity. As we all pray this prayer together, those of you that are here, listen to me. Whatever it is, whatever it is, if it's a, if it's a vice, a sin, if it's a, if it's a, a heaviness, a depression, suicidal thoughts, it doesn't matter. There's nothing, there's nothing off limits. What is it? Why don't you right now, in this moment, just lay it down. Just fall. If it's pride, just fall. Relational issues, you've been at each other, trying to prove your point. Why don't you just, what about today if you just fell? Just fell. You're watching online, right where you are, in this room. I want to lead you in a prayer, just a prayer of surrender. And if this is your first time to ever pray this prayer, we're excited to be a part of it. If you haven't been a believer for a while, I don't know where you are, but right now, why don't we just join together as one body? The Bible says we're different members, but we're one body. What if we all just prayed this prayer together? Would you join with me? Come on, how many would join with me and pray this prayer? All right, let's just say it. Lord Jesus, I fall before you today. I confess that I am not enough. Matter of fact, I'm probably too much. <laughs> so I lay everything at your feet. I surrender. Forgive me of my pride. Forgive me of my fear. This morning, I'm coming out of the shadows. Let your light overtake my heart. I confess that you are the resurrected Lord. Come on, say this. You rule and you reign over everything. But today, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you rule and reign over me and my life. The good, the bad, and the ugly. It's all yours. Use me for your glory. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Cover me with your grace. I want to live with you forever. In Jesus' name. Come on, we just say amen today. Amen. Amen. And all I can do is fall now. And worship, fall down. Give glory, fall down. Sing hallelujah. Come on, I want to hear you loud. Say, I fall, fall down. Come on, Hills family. I know you can sing it. And worship,
so glad you came today. It's a good start to the Christmas season, amen? Listen, those of you that came forward, you are not alone. Listen to me. We're not just here for you on Sunday. If you need us, you send us an email, info at thehillsnashville.com. How can we pray for you? Don't do life alone. You hear me? There's a difference in seclusion and isolation. Jesus would go and seclude himself. He would take time away. That's okay. That's a different than isolation. Don't be isolated. Especially, dear, hear me, let me talk to you as a pastor. Especially during this season. There's more depression. There's more suicides that happen during this season. Okay? Listen to me. You're not alone. We can connect you with someone. We can pray for you. Today, go by the info bar. Let them know. Matter of fact, here's what I'd love for you to do. I'd love for you to take that connect card that we talk about. That's not just for first-time guests. That's a great way to connect with us. Write down, I have a need. This is what's going on. And we're gonna pray for you this week. We, we have a team that takes those cards. We keep it confidential, but we pray for you by name. All of our first-time guests, thank you for coming. We'd love for you to fill one of those out as well. And we're going to be praying for you by name this week. Praying blessings over you. Take you by the info bar. Let them know. I'm a first-time guest. we got a really special gift for you. And then if you pray that prayer for the first time today, go by the info bar. There's a sign that says Fresh Start. We've got a resource for you. It's going to help you in the next few days in your journey with Jesus. Look, you just made a big step. It's the biggest step you've ever made in your life, and we're excited, but there's some more steps that, that we want to help you with, okay? Thanks again for being here. Remember our announcements? Invite someone for December 24th, and then plan the 31st to spend some time with your family as well. I want to thank our team. Uh, I, want to, I want to thank uh, Stephen and Shell for just jumping in, diving in today. We had some needs, and that's Stephen right back there. Look and see Stephen by the audio board. That's Stephen, and that's Shell right back there. We had some technical stuff, had some folks get sick, and man, they just dove in. And Stephen's running our video, our audio, our lighting. Should they do it all, man? So thank you guys. You're just, you're amazing. I always say that technical people are like offensive linemen. They only get their name called when they mess up, and so we're celebrating.